Good morning, everybody. This is Eureka John with Eureka Street Crypto Hub, broadcasting live on Theta TV, Sunday morning, 7.26 in the morning. It is July 18th, 2021, and I am broadcasting from Leander, Texas. And yes, I'm broadcasting a little later today. Um, it's even past 7 in the morning, so I did sleep in a little bit. I allowed myself to... I had dreams that I was at a skateboard shop trying to decide what color of wheels to put on my skateboard. There was just so much variety. I love having uh, very innocent dreams like that where the biggest worry in my life is is debating about what color of skateboard wheels to use. I was really, um, you know, I liked the OJ slime balls um, and then they had some rat bones and stuff like that. So I don't know, man, it was just a tough decision. So yeah, (laughs) yes. (laughs) So that was the, about the ex- extent and depth of my dreams last night, which is awesome. And uh, yesterday we went to Lake Buchanan, and uh, Lake Buchanan is amazing, and it's like just about an hour away from where I live, and uh, uh, it's one of the most amazing untapped lakes out there with amazing cliffs and you know everything, nice water. So yeah, uh, we'll be going out there more often. The kids really loved it. So anyway, <clears throat> um, let's get to the crypto here. It is Sunday, and uh, let me pull up and refresh this coin gecko and see what the deal is today. Um, you know, I don't expect a whole lot of excitement today. First of all, it is Sunday, and nothing ever really happens too too severe on Sundays. It uh, looks like in the past 24 hours, everything is getting a little green now, which is not a surprise since uh, <laughs> everything's just been bloody red. So it is not the Sunday bloody Sunday. I made another painting. I'm going to do one for every single day. My kids enjoy doing that stuff with me. So whatever, you know, you'll always know what day it is here on this channel. <laughs> oh man, I know it's, it's hokey, but uh, I don't care. So um, <clears throat> yes, yeah, so uh, Bitcoin, $31,813.70. Ethereum, $1,967.64. We have Tether, uh, USDC and Binance USDC, three stable coins in the top 10. Uh, Cardano is $1.20, Binance Coin 306.81, um, the Doge 18 cents, Polkadot 12.80, Uniswap 16.73, okay, Solana 27.40, Litecoin 121.39. Um, I mean, you know, not a whole lot of change. The market's pretty boring right now. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let me see if there's any, like, really big changers. Um, let's see here. Top, where is it? Oh, yeah, so past past seven days, let's see what's gone on here. Let's see what the big changers are. NEM, I need to see what's up with this NEM token. And I've been saying that for a while, and I never have. So I don't even know what it does, what it is, why it sometimes goes through these little spikes. Um, OKB. Okay, Coin Hedera Hashgraph up 8.7 percent. Axie Infinity is still going up a little bit. It says you can tell it, it shot up quite a bit, and I wasn't about to uh, just jump in and try to buy it at the last minute and try to catch that wave. Sometimes when you see that wave, and uh, you can be happy for the people that um, caught that wave, but if you already see the wave, then the wave is gone. So don't try to to jump on the tail end of any type of spikes because it never well, most cases, it doesn't really work out well for you. <laughs> and I've been guilty of that, too. Um, I have caught some waves. I did catch the BitTorrent wave when it when it quickly um, spiked, and I, I made some good money off of that. Uh, but then um, right when everybody started jumping on is right when I sold, and I'm glad I did because it crashed right back to where it was right after that. Um, so, uh, yeah, so nothing really exciting there. I wanted to, I was going to have my guest on today, um, Camilo Echeverri, the CEO of, of uh, Meta Game Hub DAO, um, but uh, uh, <laughs> CEO DAO it doesn't really, you know, but it's the company that is, is forming the Meta Game Hub DAO. Um, and uh, <clears throat> um, he had to reschedule till Tuesday, so I'll have him on Tuesday morning. And uh, um, it's going to be 5.30 in the morning my time and 10.30 in the morning his time because he's in Germany. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we'll have that interview then. And today, I mean, it's fine because today I wanted to talk a little bit more about DAOs. I know yesterday I talked about DAOs and I kind of gave an introduction for them. And I talked about how in Australia they're finan- they're legally recognizing DAOs now. And, 
you know, uh, they want to legally recognize DAOs. And in Wyoming, they are already legally recognizing DAOs. If you don't know what DAOs are, and if you missed yesterday's episode, DAOs are decentralized autonomous organizations. And uh, basically, it is a uh, organizational structure of a company that is written in code. And um, anybody who's a member of the DAO, if that takes owning the token or not, or whatever, um, any decision they make, the payroll, um, you know, anything like that is all done through code and voting. And um, yeah, it's, it's, let's see here, um, if there's any good spot where it just quickly defines it. So DAOs are informal organizations of individuals who rely on smart contracts to enforce collective decisions without human error or manipulation. Today, DAOs are frequently deployed for many purposes, such as decentralized finance governance, governance, so, and you see Aave and you see Compound and you see, you know, uh, MakerDAO and you see a lot of these lending protocols and um, the DAOs are the ones that govern them. And, uh, um, you yeah, know, so it, it, all the decisions since decentralized finance is supposed to be um, done uh, on code only and no hu banking intermediary or no human intermediary, DAOs are the the uh, people that hold the governance tokens that get to vote on specific issues. Hold on, let me shut this this curtain. All right, there, the sun was just blasting in because it's that time of, time of morning. Usually when I'm broadcast, broadcasting, it's, it's, it's dark. So anyway, that's a DAO. All right, so Wyoming, they're legal. Um, yeah, a lot of uh, protocols are going towards DAOs. I'm part of the bankless DAO. Um, there's just a lot of experimentation going on with companies becoming DAOs and giving the power over 100% to their employees. And, their, and the word CEO in, in DAOs is kind of a... A, a pejorative nasty term you shouldn't want to strive to be a ceo of a dao um so uh, anyway that's what a dao is uh so then we looked at you know a couple examples of uh companies that um make dao software basically um like for instance aragon um aragon one is a company that uh um where you can um it builds the tools and services related to Aragon, which is um, this, uh, the Aragon.org, the uh, optimistic governance for DAOs. And you can use um, Aragon Govern. You can download it. Um, and it's, you know, it's kind of like a CRM system for, for companies, QuickBooks or whatever you use, you know. Um, and uh, it has all the tools available to uh, be able to, you know, spin up your own DAO. And, uh, you know, from there, you know, it has all the voting systems and, uh, you know, everything like that in order to make decisions. Um, so simple and low cost schedule on chain executions that any token holder may challenge in Aragon court. Uh, so it's, it's a decentralized court system in a way too. And this, this kind of, the, this kind of software here in Dow stack as well as another one, um, and it's called alchemy. So let's go take a look at Alchemy real quick. You know, this kind of software right here, so with Alchemy, a platform that lets communities govern themselves. This really begs the question, do we need um, uh, uh, government? <laughs> you know, like, are, is this kind of a platform here automating a lot of the processes that clog up our systems with lawyers and fees and court costs and all types of crap that um, is just uh, putting a bunch of people into slavery, to be honest. And, uh, you know, we can wipe all that out using DAOs. And um, so how Alchemy puts DAOs to work for your community. It empowers your community members. Anyone can sub submit a project proposal to, to a DAO. Proposals include project description and budget. Proposals can be anything from contractor projects to policy changes. Make your community meritocratic. And what is meritocracy? And I, I do this all the time um, because I don't assume that everybody has been able to have a you know university or an education and or whatever and learn a lot of these kind of SAT type of words or you know, um, you know graduate school words or whatever. You know I didn't. I mean I went to public school and you know whatever you know <laughs> all I was concerned about in school was being cool so that, that's you know. so a meritocracy is a political system in which economic goods are 
political powers are invested in individual people on the basis of talent, effort, and achievement rather than wealth or social class. Advancement in such a system is based on performance as measured through examination or demonstrated achievement. Um, although the concept of meritocracy has existed for centuries, the term itself was coined in 1958 by sociologist Michael Dunlop Young in a dystopian political and satirical book, The Rise of Meritocracy. Ah, seems like it'd be an interesting book to read. Um, anyway, so now that we got that out of the way, um, let's go back to the DAOs. So DAOs um, can be uh, meritocracy based. And uh, like I said, I'm part of the Bankless DAO and they uh, recently had their first, I guess, um, uh, payout um, because um, DAOs a lot of times can have inputs in income of money and the Bankless DAO does um, through subscriptions and through you know, uh, other avenues um they're they're using the liquidity pro protocol with their name on it to collect the fees and liquidity is a is a DeFi protocol um uh back end and anybody can put their the, their skin on it on the on the front and and uh run a DeFi protocol and they're they're doing their version of that and then um there's other ways in which the bankless dow is collectively making money um for instance the dev team will be doing things like doing a uh, consulting type of projects and uh, bringing in income to the DAO in that way as well. And then what do they do with this money? How does it get divvied out in the DAO? Well, it does through voting processes and um, you know, uh, a, a lot of that organization and structure is set up in this type of software like DAO stack and Aragon and stuff like that. And then we use a, um, a software called Coordinate coordinate all right to um to do the uh voting proceed sorry to, to vote on on uh, income here so coordinate is a platform for DAOs to easily and fairly distribute resources to contributors community grants internal salaries and special projects can be incentivized and rewarded by the community itself instead of cumbersome voting or black box communities Contributors themselves can quickly and transparently reward the value they see being created. The promise of DAOs is decentralized collab collaboration, <laughs> where teams of people can solve hard problems together and share in the rewards of the work. As the revolutionary potential of DAOs becomes increasingly apparent, so do their challenges and limitations, especially by those operating within them. Coordinate aims to make the actual experience of people working in DAOs more dynamic, rewarding, and fair. Coordinate moves more decision-making to the community. The simple premise is that if you ask everyone in the community who is doing good work, their collective answers will give a good sense of where the, the value is and who should be most rewarded. Over time, this also provides valuable insights for the DAO about what kind of work is prioritized and what the community finds most valuable and who are the key contributors in di for different areas. The shared visual, visual display also enables everyone in the community to see who's working on what and find opportunities for collaboration or reduce duplication of effort. The focus is now on gift circles for resource distribution, but features are being added continually so that budgeting, recruiting, and onboard prioritization and investments can all be done on the platform. So yeah, uh, um, we used Coordinate last time, and uh, you know, a lot of you know, the, the bank tokens got allocated and according to who as an individual in the DAO you thought uh, you worked with or you thought did good work or stuff like that. And I know it can kind of be a popularity contest and they are working out tweaks on that as well, but it still is better than a top-down system. Um, and it did highlight areas of, of importance in the DAO of what people thought was po interesting and useful and needed and stuff like that. Um, Yesterday, I drew an analogy of a pirate ship. Um, you know, you have uh, a standard British military ship and the crew on board, they're just hired to be there. They don't receive any other motive to be there other than their paycheck, and that's it. And then the captain is the one, you know, living in the lap of luxury, has the biggest cabin, you know, the, you know the, the, all the fancy food and everything like that. Well, on pirate ships, a lot of times, in many cases, the captain, you know, was just one of a, of, a, of a lot of crew and they would vote on you know where they wanted to get their booty from and then whenever they did divvied out the booty they would all vote on you know who did what and who gets the most booty for what and stuff like that and that's more aligned to what a DAO is so a DAO can be 
likened in a lot of ways to a meritocracy and to a pirate ship. And I heard this, they were, uh, the Bankless Dow has it in, in a, a podcast called Making Bank. And I think it was Adam George or something that, that uh, drew up that comparison. Or no, maybe it was Iced Cool. Anyway, it was one of the Dow members that drew the comparison to the pirate ship. And that's where I got that from. But uh, it's a really interesting comparison. And uh, yeah, I, I just, you know, uh, I wanted to repeat it. Um, so um, yeah, so there's, you know, we, there's a lot of different ways to do that. There's a lot of platforms to build DAOs, and Aragon is one, DAO Stack is another, and then we have Coordinate for the voting process. And then uh, you know, Andre Cronhey wrote here, a decentralized pay, payroll management for DAOs. I mean, I, I think that DAOs would even have a place in church organizations too, because you get a lot of church politics and you have the whole 501c3 tax issue and, you know, and then people debating about you know, who gets paid what, and then churches and, and nonprofit organizations that can get real touchy. Um, so uh, this is this type of thing, like coordinate and stuff like that, and, and maybe form churches as DAOs almost, you know, to where there is no top-down structure. You know, and, and uh, so that, you know, it's just something to consider. Um, DAOs don't have top-down management. There is no HR department, there are no contracts and no salary negotiations. How do you properly incentivize and reward contributors? Um, when, when the Yearn DAO first started, it adopted governance weighted salaries. Um, and then Andre Cronhey, he's the, the founder of Yearn, he said, I use the term loose, loosely since technically they are off once per month grants if you don't contribute the following month, no grant. Okay. So anyway, governance weighted salaries um, where <clears throat> simply proposals set up by community members where they propose that computer, com, contributor X should receive Y payment. These actions require management and need monthly DAO votes approvals. This doesn't scale well. And uh, you know, um, coming from seminary and having seen church organizations and nonprofit organizations and you know, skim off the top due to overhead and governance costs and all this type of expenses um, when people donate to nonprofit organizations, really only about maybe 10% of that actual donation finally get to the people that actually need it. This is why whenever you work in a company that is like high pressuring you to, to donate to United Way or something because some middle manager is trying to, to uh, achieve some kind of quota to his upper managers, for how many employees he can get to sign up to donate. I mean, that should be a crime to walking around to all the employees in your department and trying to pressure them into donate to these nonprofit organizations um, just so the upper management can have some kind of tax write off. It's ridiculous and it, it just it angers me. Um, so, you know, and it's happened to me, it happened to my mom when she was working at a bank, they were high pressuring her to try to donate to United Way. And you know, anything that you donate to a lot of these organizations, only a, fra a, ba a bare fraction of it actually gets to the people that, it, that it's needed to get to. Um, so maybe some kind of DAO system, um, you know, decentralized payroll management or something uh, can be used in these types of structures. I don't know how or what yet, but it's it's something's got to be done uh, in order to to eliminate this type of um, trickle down in nonprofits to where when people donate, they're only uh, only ten cents of their dollar actually makes it to the people that they want to donate to because everybody's taking their skim due to overhead costs. Um, anyway, <laughs> this is all getting me all worked up now. Yeah. Um, because I, I see it, I've seen it happen, you know, in, through uh, interfaith and you know, church organizations, through social justice organizations, and you name it, man. Everybody's got their their overhead costs, you know. So uh, these require, so they say these require active management and do not need monthly Davos system. Okay, so um, okay, so anyway, to address scaling and overhead problems, the Yearn team built Coordinate. These are my favorite kind of products since they originate out of a personal need but can be generalized to help any other organizations slash DAOs struggling with a similar problem. What is Coordinate? Simply put, anyone wishing to contribute to Yearn or their own DAO can register uh, every epoch for, er, for Yearn one month and you can select the team members where you've been working and interacting with interacting with below Yearn contributors. Um, so anyway, um, you know, I don't know, it kind of goes through some of the technical process of it, but Coordinate allows decentralized teams and DAOs without top-down management or HR to autonomously um, allocate and reward contributors with funds via civil-resistant social graph. And civil-resistant means 
where you prevent multiple identities being made uh, under the same person in order to maximize some kind of uh, reward. Um, and a lot of uh, blockchains have highly Sybil resistant uh, properties that uh, prevent certain IPs from creating multiple um, addresses in order to be able to uh, provide a whole bunch of staking from various addresses so they end up owning more than 51% of the work uh, network and then can uh, corrupt a network um, so yeah this is a way to prevent all that so um, yeah so you have all these people voting for you know, various other people to earn pieces of the the income pie based upon what they think somebody that they know in the organization did um, so yeah it kind of creates a meritocratic system and obviously it's not perfect um, so let's go back over here to Aragon and Dow stack. So this is Aragon govern. Um, so they have simple and low cost voteless execution following voting signal follow signaling proposals, but avoid expensive time consuming on on uncontroversial decisions. Um, efficient, scalable governance that is optimized for progress, but blocks bad actors. Um, what is Aragon Govern? A pioneering framework for frictionless DAO governance with on-chain execution and plug-in dispute resolution. So it is software that allows people to do all this stuff um, pretty easily. It, it's a lot of it's plug and play. You don't have to be a coder you know, to, uh, to jump in and use products like these. Um, so you, know, you just kind of have to know how to plug it all in. And uh, let's see here, DAO stack. Let's, let's scroll down a little bit. Inquire now about starting a DAO. The launch process is tell us about your project and the DAO you want to launch. With our help, define your DAO's mission, allocate initial funding, and assign reputation to community members. Onboard your community to Alchemy using text and video materials we provide and watch your DAO grow and create. And partners launching DAO on Alchemy, Gnosis, uh, Libreland, Polkadot, um, and then uh, a lot of times there's tokens associated with it. You can tip people back and forth. Um, you know, there's uh, each DAO kind of has their mini currency, like the Bankless DAO has the bank token. And um, in a way to avoid really high expensive Ethereum fees, they use XDAI. And uh, XDAI is a, um, a side chain of Ethereum and it, it's only a fraction of the transaction fees. So a lot of times when people are wanting to do kind of inter, intra die um, uh, tipping protocols and payment and stuff like that to other DAO members um, instead of having to use Ethereum and all the transaction fees and the slow processing time associated with they can make their own token and put it on the X die and use X die to transfer that back and forth so let me give you an example here um, so, dear Bankless Nation, uh, we, we celebrated the launch of Ethereum 2.0 this week, but we know it'll take a while until um, uh, it, it can start using it for DeFi. Okay, that's a whole other subject. So, even so, DeFi apps need transition scalability fast. Optimistic rollups roll are showing promise, but those still need a few more months in the oven. Okay, uh, so what have we in the works today? We have XDAI, Ethereum's less decentralized little sister, and XDAI does a damn good job at picking up where Ethereum left off. Anything on Ethereum can be ported to XDAI. So financial applications, DAOs, and non-fungible tokens, anything with lower security needs to become a perfect fit. We use XDAI for our bankless badges. So in the DAO, we, um, when we attend meetings and things like that, we get a POAP badge, and that is a proof of attendance protocol badge. And uh, these are on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, what is a fast way to hand out these badges without expensive gas fees and stuff like that? Well, um, you know, um, in DAOs, if you want to prove that you were at a meeting, you get a little POAP badge to prove you were there. And uh, I mean, I do have a little collection of POAP badges. Let me see here. Um, uh, where did it go? I don't know. It's on one of these tabs somewhere. I, I lost it. But I got a bunch of POAP badges from meetings I've gone to on the Bankless DAO. And anyway, those, those are on the Ethereum blockchain. But a lot of times, if you want to transfer those back and forth, and, and it would clog up the operations of a DAO if you were to try to do that on the Ethereum blockchain at this moment. So they use XDAI as a blockchain. Um, so um, in the past few months, we've seen NFT projects like POAP, DeFi protocols like Perpetual Protocol, um, uh, blockchain games like Dark Forest and DAOs like PrimeDAO, all exploring XDAI as an alternative scaling solution. There's even a strong bid for XDAI to scale Reddit community points. Oh, so we have XDAI, Ethereum's less decentralized little sister, and XDAI does a damn good job at picking up where Ethereum left off. 
Anything on Ethereum can be ported to XDAI, so financial applications, DAOs, and NFTs, anything with lower security needs become a perfect fit. Um, so they said, we use XDAI for our bankless badges. Um, so intro to XDAI, so a side chain of Ethereum. And I know I'm kind of going off on a tangent, but I think it's important because I've seen XDAI thrown around and being used by a lot of um, uh, projects and DeFi projects and DAOs and stuff like that. And I'm like, what in the hell is this XDAI? Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a layer two solution for Ethereum that uh, provides good, fast, and cheap transactions for uh, DAOs and DeFi projects to use you know, back and forth with each other. And then when they're finally ready to settle and cash out, they can move whatever they, they need over to the Ethereum chain. So in our blockchain family, Ethereum is the well-regarded and respected big sister. She's quirky and cool, but responsible, gets good grades, student council, you get the idea. Most of you know and love Ethereum, but let's take today and meet XDAI, Ethereum's younger sister. She looks up to ETH and depends on her, but also thinks ETH can be a bit stodgy sometimes. XDAI, XDAI is a more rebellious and fun and artist and free spirit. Okay, well, um, a great personification. <laughs> Despite their surface differences, they get along well together and complement each other when achieving fairly co common family goals, such as stuff like building a decentralized settlement network, open finance and non-fungible assets, etc. They are a family and in the end have the long-term vision and destination towards a decentralized blockchain-centric future. Um, how e e XDAI and Ethereum are similar. Um, XDAI is an is a Ethereum virtual machine sidechain that functions independently from Ethereum, yet relies on Ethereum for the creation of its native token XDAI, converted DAI from Ethereum. So uh, XDAI is basically DAI that is converted from Ethereum and put on this sidechain. As well, so it's still pegged to a dollar as well as its multi-use governance token, Stake. The, the, the network follows the same protocol updates, block size limits, and EVM parameters such as the Ethereum mainnet. So it follows all the same rules um, as Ethereum does. This compatibility makes it easier for developers, projects, and users to move seamlessly between chains. And with a token bridge architect architecture, tokens and messages are also transferable between Ethereum and XDAI. So all the information on the Ethereum chain can be transferred over to the XDAI chain, as well as other blockchains. Through interoperability, XDAI extends the available Ethereum operating space, providing a network with less congestion along with familiar tools and applications for developers. So it does provide interoperability with Ethereum with other blockchains. And we've been talking a lot about interoperability for the past week or so. Um, how XDAI and ETH are different. XDAI is a chain with a stable reserve currency. Transactions and fees are conducted with XDAI, which is created when DAI on Ethereum is locked on the XDAI bridge. The value of XDAI remains stable to the US dollar, meaning transactions costs, costs are predictable and not subject to market fluctuations. The real cost of a transaction on Ethereum can vary wildly, very wildly based on congestion and price of ETH, because ETH is basically traffic based and is auction based, meaning the highest bidder gets to have their transaction go through, not so on the XDAI chain. Uh, looking at recent, recent prices, a simple ETH transaction will cost $5.50. On XDAI, the same transaction costs one cent. Um, XDAI uses a different consensus mechanism called POS DAO and uses proof of stake incentivization model to achieve five second block times with low transaction costs. Validators are incentivized with stake rather than the native XDAI token. Um, this decouples incentivization from transactional currency um, so transactions can be processed with minimal cost. Currently nominated validators from esteemed organizations, Gnosis, MakerDAO, Shapeshift, and there's a full list, are, sign are signing blocks, but operations are transitioning to more permissionless delegated model where community members can participate as validators and delegators. So at the point of this writing, there was only some large validators, but they were trying to delegate it to lots of other uh, people of the general populace. So anyway, XDAI offers additional scaling capacity for Ethereum. It can support primary transaction heavy operations, complement existing Ethereum applications, and act as an overflow when things become too congested on the mainnet. Many projects have chosen to migrate to XDAI in order to, to take advantage of the low cost and stable payments model. Others use XDAI because of their applications simply cannot function properly within the limitations of Ethereum 1.0. So basically the point of what I was trying to make about going off onto XDAI was that XDAI allows DAOs to operate at this moment in a lot of cases. DAOs built on Ethereum um, in a... In a um, um, affordable and timely way. Um, I mean, honestly, XDAI sounds awesome. I don't see why <laughs> XDAI wouldn't just take over Ethereum, but I mean, I guess it doesn't because it's built on Ethereum. Um, so XDAI is the full promise and XDAI is excited 
Uh, you ETH know, 2.0 is full of promise and XDAI is, ex is excited to help scale Ethereum during this multi-year transition period. XDAI will continue to support projects and applications that need low-cost, predictable transactions for users or have contracts that must process many transactions in short time frame. Um, XDAI is also actively working to enhance network and bridge security and increase protocol decentralization. So anyway, um, yeah, so until that time, XDAI will be helping where she can, spurring new innovations, enabling unique projects that are otherwise impossible on Ethereum, such as DAOs, and attending a few virtual family functions here and there. Hope to see you there. So yeah, uh, to bring this full circle, XDAI plans to reunite with her sister Ethereum and live in harmony. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea of how DAOs are able to be done on um, the Ethereum blockchain since Ethereum is uh, suffering or has suffered from major high gas fees and congestion and scalability issues and all that. And you're like, well, how would they be able to build a DAO on Ethereum uh, with, with Ethereum having as many problems as it does? Well, it's this, it's XDAI. Um, so uh, anyway, um, yeah, I'm running, I've run out of time, but I can't, I just wanted to touch on this one last thing here. Um, who are the people that are writing the code for the DAOs and uh, how are they governed, you know? Um, and so they, right here, um, uh, Chainlink God in his tweet says, direct token weighting is imperfect and will result in a plutocracy most of the time. And plutocracy is governance by the rich and the people with the most wealth and assets. It's kind of an um, opposite to meritocracy, who is governed by the people that do the most. Uh, so anyway, um, do direct token weighting is imperfect and will result in a plutocracy most of the time. I think most DAOs will transition to a synthetics urine style model. Um, and uh, Andre Kronhe is the founder of urine and uses Coordinate and uh, does more of the meritocracy style model with representatives who are voted in and checked by token holders. A bit of a technocracy, but that's preferred initially. Um, and they they also use quadratic voting as well, in which you know one token is one vote, um, yeah, and then uh, three tokens is is two votes, so everything is, is squared. You know, um, uh, ten tokens, no, no, one hundred tokens is ten votes. You know, so or is ten tokens? I'm sorry, one hundred votes is ten tokens. You know, so. It, Anytime you want to buy more votes, it's 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 squared up as the cost of how much it costs to do that vote. So it kind of in a way is a as a preventative from help from keeping the rich people from dominating all the one to one votes. So uh, anyway, so so yeah, who who governs the people that code the DAO platforms and that are governing the DAO platforms? And then they go on to this project, Ethereum, Ethereanos. <laughs> and the, the buildle token. And this is going down a whole other rabbit hole. And that's why I had a hard time jumping on and starting this this this, this podcast today um, because I just kept on going out, down rabbit hole after rabbit hole. You know, I went from Aragon and, and DAO stack to die to uh, the XDAI token and, and how that helps with the governance and the coordinate. And then I went, you know, from there down to Ethereum, the ethos dot, ETH.link, you know, I mean, it just goes on and on. Then the DFO protocol, you know, in which, you know, it's just, it's, this is governance for the people that are building the DAOs, you know, yeah, I, 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 this is like going all going way over my head, but if you really want to keep going down this rabbit hole, you know, go into decentralized flexible organizations. You know, um, a new flexibility layer for, for Ethereum dApps. Microservices are a huge step forward in Web 2.0 functions and can easily be updated and fixed without compromise the entire application. Through research and develop, dApps can be coded with Lego, con Lego contracts, a.k.a. upgradable microservices. Um, so, yeah, uh, I mean, you can go on and on and on. DFOs are Ethereum-based research and development project. They are on-chain companies with proprietary assets and voting tokens as programmable entities made by Ethereans for Ethereum. So any type of new smart contract wants to be built, they have the token holders have the power to vote on what gets built as far as new smart contracts are concerned. And then they can, you know, uh, yeah, the rabbit hole goes deep and this is well into the murky waters of my ability to comprehend. So I'm just showing, I, I'm not trying to explain this. I'm just trying to show you where all this stuff is going. It gets deeper and deeper and deeper. 
Um, DFO Hub, this is where decentralized flexible organization begins. DFO Hub is an on-chain decentralized GitHub to deploy and govern decentralized flexible organizations. It unlocks all functionalities required by communities to develop their own dApps without needing to know and trust each other. So people can build dApps and all contribute without even needing to having to uh, conspire or put their heads together or anything like that. Uh, so they can start an on-chain company with voting tokens as programmable entities. So there is no one person that is, or one group of people that is building a DAO. Um, this is a bunch of people all creating separate little Lego pieces to put together your own DAOs from there. So as, as far as I can understand it, and this is, <laughs> even without coding skills, Ethereans can understand how to create an organization, set basic rules, and vote for advanced code-based proposals written by coders. So. Yeah, it's a way to create your own DAO uh, by uh, piece and parceling uh, a lot of these uh, Lego pieces together that are built by a bunch of different people in a GitHub sort of way. And if you don't know what GitHub is, it's a, an open source repository for code to where anybody can use pieces of the code and copy and paste. So <laughs> I'm going so far deep into the weeds here. All right, with that said, my time is up. Um, what's up, Sippin' KIO88? Nice to see you here, and thanks for jumping on as I'm jumping off. Um, I've gone 36 minutes trying to explain all this, and I still don't feel I've really come to any type of, type of resolution um, on, on this whole DAO topic. I could still talk about more, but I'm going to leave it alone for now. I think I gave you a good intro yesterday and some good tools to work with, talking about Alchem... Uh, Aragon and Dow stack and then I explained XDI a little bit um, so and then now I've just gone deeper into the weeds so I just need to let it go now I just let it go and, you know get to the point where I have to to just admit that I don't know what in the hell I'm talking about and um, you know let let other people take it from there and I hope I started you off on a good path and it lets you jump off the diving board into this deep 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 pool where the waters get real murky and the, the territory is uncharted and DAOs are uncharted territory. DAOs are pirate ships. They are not recognized by most organizations and communities except in Wyoming and now Australia wants to recognize them. But DAOs are experimental. Keep that in mind when you join a DAO that nobody knows what they're doing. And uh, I certainly don't. But uh, All right, I will talk to you guys tomorrow and then Tuesday we have that interview with uh, Made a Game Hub. Um, Dow founder. So, all right, I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.